Welcome to the webinar on overall equipment effectiveness. The thoughts presented in this webinar are personal thoughts of the presenter and are not necessarily endorsed by Lean Six Sigma International Board. Hi, I'm Ravi Kant. I'm a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and I would be your partner and coach and will help you in understanding overall equipment effectiveness, otherwise known as OEE. During this half an hour webinar, you will discover how OE shall help your organization to improve effectiveness of the process and do more in the same time. Hence, it will bring more revenue and more profits. So the first question and anytime anyone comes up with a new idea, new thought is that why that and how is it helpful for me? What is in it for me? So OE, if you are in person, who is very much interested in the benefits out of a productivity improvement. If you are a person who wants to make a name in his organization because of something drastic that he has done, something very effective he has done. If you are a person who wants a company to gain a competitive edge in the market, then I bet you stop doing all other tasks now and give your full focus here. What I would be sharing with you would be common sense, but believe me, this common sense is not common. So OE actually helps up in improving production efficiency. It helps you exploit the best out of your bottleneck resource. Bottleneck resource would be a new term, right? So what's a bottleneck? In any process, the equipment or the machine that produces the least parts in an hour as compared to the whole process line. So what happens if every line runs with the highest efficiency that they can run? So at this particular bottleneck resource, it will not be able to produce the same number of parts. So number of parts will start getting uh, stack up before this bottleneck resource in the form of an inventory. Let's suppose you have four machines in line. The first machine produces 10 parts an hour. Second machine produces 15 parts an hour and third machine produces three parts an hour and fourth machine produces nine parts an hour. So the third machine that produces three parts an hour is your bottleneck resource. So scenario where OE can be used, it can be used on any machine, it can be used on assembly line, mostly has been used till date in manufacturing companies, but it can also be used to assess performance levels of any asset. Let's suppose you want to talk about an IT industry where you have a server, so you can also manage the OE of the server. So better said that it can also be customized as per industry requirement wherever we want to measure productivity and efficiency of the resource. So let's come up uh, with a brief history of how OE actually came up into picture. So as most of you have an idea that TPM was uh, invented in Japan, total productive maintenance. So it was Nakajima San who was a father of TPM total productive maintenance who came with this concept of OEE. So when I talk about OEE, we break it into three parts. It is it comprises of availability, performance and quality. Now we get deeper into what availability is, what performance is and what quality is. Availability talks about the total operating time that you have versus the planned production time. Availability is sort of a ratio between total operating time versus whatever time you have planned for production. Let me give you an example. Suppose you have a shift planned for 8 hours. Out of this 8 hours, you tried to operate it or maybe there were no breakdowns, there were certain other stoppages in between that prevented you to run the machine. So you were able to run the machine for only 6 hours out of this 8 hours. So when you divide 6 by 8, it comes to 3 by 4. You talk it in percentage, it comes as 75%. So we'll say that our process or the machine is available 75% of the time. We talk about performance now. So performance efficiency is that you have a limited time. Let's suppose that okay, out of 8 hours, 6 hours was your planned production time. 
So in the six hours, how have you been working? In the six hours, let's suppose that the total parts produced were 600, right? We have the operating time as six hours. So total parts produced 600 divided by six gives us 100. The designed rate of performance for the machine was 200. So we made 100 parts per hour and the design rate should have been 200 parts per hour. So 100 divided by 200 gives up 50%. Hence, we'll say that our machine performance efficiency is 50%. Third part, quality. Good units produced as per the percentage of total units produced. So don't confuse much on it. I'll give you a very simple example. Let's suppose we produce 1000 parts in total in the whole shift. Out of this 1000 parts, 800 parts were right the first time. Right first time means you did not do any rework on them. You did not have any rejects out of this 800. So 800 divided by 1000 comes up at 80%. So your quality for the shift was 80%. So let's uh, have a very small example. The data mentioned here is arbitrary data so that it will be easy for you to understand. We have assumed the shift length to be 8 hours. So 8 into 60 minutes per hour makes up as 480 minutes. So the shift length is 480 minutes. A planned downtime that is break for meals is planned as 30 minutes. Total downtime that is that was not planned is like machine downtime and the setup time to make the machine ready after a changeover. This talks about 60 minutes and 90 minutes. Total time is 150 minutes. In this shift, we produced 800,000 parts and 1,000 parts were rejected or were not right the first time. Idle run rate or the rated speed is 3500 parts per minute. So let's calculate availability first. Availability would be like operating time divided by the planned production time into 100. So first we'll calculate the planned production time. 480 minutes is the shift length and 30 minutes is the planned break. So we subtract 30 minutes from 480 minutes. It comes up to 450 minutes. Operating time. Operating time is the total downtime that we had. We subtracted from the total pro planned production time. So 450 minus 150, this comes to 300 minutes. So availability would be 300 divided by 450 into 100. This brings up to 66.67%. We come up into the next point of calculating performance. Performance talks about total parts produced divided by operating time and that is once again divided by the idle run rate. We have produced 800,000 parts. We divided by 300 and once again divided by 3,500. That is the idle run rate or the rated speed of the machine into 100. This gives up the value of 76.19%. Quality. That's good. Products divided by total products produced into 100. So we know we have produced 800,000 products and 1,000 were rejected. So it's like 799,000 products that were produced and that is divided by 800,000. This brings up to 99.88% quality. Now we'll calculate overall equipment effectiveness. As already uh, we have shared that availability into performance into quality is the overall equipment effectiveness. Remember, OE is always given as percentage. So 66.67 into 76.2 into 99.87. This brings up to around 50.74%. That's round figured as 51%. And this is less than the industry standard. So let's get to understand what the industry standard speaks about. Industry standards talks about that availability of a machine should be around 90%, performance efficiency around 95% and rate of quality should be 99.9%. This brings up to OE of 85%. You can have a clear look of what the standards talk about and what would be the ideal state of OE. 
So basic study from around the world talks about that OE of a typical manufacturing process is around 60%. World class OE is considered to be at 85%. Hence, there is a lot of room for improvement in most manufacturing process. Let me give you a brief of what uh, OE is once again a term that is more of a ratio. The ideal state, the rated machine at many organizations, they like pharmaceutical organizations, they measure OE in terms of the validated speed. Ideally, it should be measured like 80% of the rated speed of the manufacturer. So there's always a scope of improvement. But once again, these terms, uh, they may vary depending upon organization to organization. What we are giving you is the basic definition how it was done in TPM. So now we'll talk about OE and the six big losses. So theoretical production time, plant production time, effectiveness, effective production time, net production time, productive time. These are all other jargons. But let me help you understand this in a very simple way. So. Theoretical production time is the total time that you have in any year, any month, any shift, whichever the OE you are calculating. Plant production time is you remove the plant stops. For example, there's a preventive maintenance that is planned on the line. So you can, you might be thinking of taking it out because that's how OE is being calculated. If there are planned meals or breaks, if there are planned training schedules with during which you have planned to stop your line, so these are actually planned stop pages. So what you do is these stop pages are actually removed out from the theoretical production time. Even if uh, your line doesn't run on week offs, etc., that would also be a planned stop. Now we talk about effective production time. So total availability losses like stops, breakdowns, setup adjustments, etc., even changeover are availability losses. Next step is finding out the net production time so when you remove out the speed losses out of the net production time you, what you get uh, from the effective production time you get is the net production time so what do you mean by speed losses there is a rated speed for a machine when you run it at a lower speed that comes up in the bracket of speed losses the reduced speed a lot many time there are many minor stoppages that count for like 15 seconds 10 seconds 5 seconds most of the time it keeps on happening and it's very difficult to record these are like very short stops or idle stops the productive time is once you subtract the quality losses out of whatever has come up as the net production time because any error that you did all the rejects and once uh, you have done a changeover and you are doing startups there are a lot of rejects the time involved in making this is also a critical time that is lost. Hence, these account for the quality losses. Hence, we talk about quality is like making right first time. So, a very clear understanding about availability, performance and quality. Now, we talk about a waterfall diagram to represent OEE. This is a very nice way to help you understand which are the major losses which are the minor where do you want to focus should this loss have been occurred and can we take any countermeasures so that and as well as mitigation plan so that these losses don't come up in the future so oe waterfall is a very uh, graphical representation i'll say where it helps you understand that these are the losses and hence you can take action on that so it was like the management group Peter Decker said that if you are not measuring it, so you cannot manage it. So when you start measuring and you start seeing when you start managing, you start planning your actions against that. So we'll quickly cover you through OE waterfall and also help you understand how you can make a waterfall in a Microsoft Excel. So I have already kept uh, something ready for you so that it will be readily available. So you need something like a table where you can have your plant production time and your shift changeover, foil changes, whichever are the down times that you expect. Then uh, the batch changeover, setup time, speed losses. You can even come up with the terms like uh, quality rejects, so the time lost in making those. So let's understand how do we make a uh, OE waterfall diagram. 
uh, I have taken the liberty of already having the table that is required to do the same what I need now is I want to create a table here so that it looks a bit uh, better what I will also do is uh, to save time I will use the same values here and paste them here so there are certain things that you need to do for that uh, I'll quickly brief you through how that needs to be done certain ground rules you need to mention 100 here 100 percent here and zero here and zero here rest of the table can be created so how do we do that let's suppose uh, we had about 30 minutes of uh, time that was lost because of quality rejects so when we have to take a percentage we'll divide 30 out of 480 assuming that our planned production time was 480 minutes so it comes to like 6.3 percent so similar is the one 4.2 percent that we have already taken as an arbitrary value similarly if uh, you had a breakdown of around 100 minutes in the shift so 100 divided by 480 that is the total planned production time so that comes up to 20 0.8% so here and just an example of 18% that I have already taken now what we need to do is once you had all the values like this 4.2 6.3 18.8 etc now what we do is we subtract 4.2 from 100 this gives up 95.8% now 95.8% you subtract 6.3% so this gives up to 89.6% from 89.6% you deduct 118.8 that comes up to 70.8% and similarly you just keep on doing the same till the end so the this value and this value are the same because here would be a zero now what we need to do is we need to plot this thing in a waterfall so that you can understand how the downtimes have been occurring you select this go to insert go to a column type chart and use a second chart that is a stacked column chart the moment you have clicked it you get something like uh, this chart so i will try to adjust uh, i'll remove the table of 100 percent at this point of time and i'll remove the grid lines you can right click here and do format access and uh, text options and text direction you can cope it as 270 degrees so that this is clearly visible what you wanted to do now in the chart title you can write as oee waterfall diagram so your oe waterfall diagram is ready now we need to hide some of the things that we want not want to project so just click here and go to fill and select no fill then you select only the first plan production time and you can give it a color let's suppose we give it an as orange now you want to give them a different color for your understanding you can give them something like blue or any other color that you wish to and if you want to separate and just uh, show the OE figure in a separate color then you can give it this now the beauty is let's add data labels to it in total we have added data labels to all of them and we add data label only to this one now how to interpret this waterfall diagram let me make the fonts a bit bigger so that you can easily see them hope you can see them right so it talks about that pro plan production time was 100% out of this the quality losses were 4.2% 6.3% were the foil chain losses breakdown was 18.8% batch changer was 12.3% setup adjustments were 10.4% and speed losses was 20.8% so when you account all of this together what is left behind is just 
so around 72.9 percent is what you lost so this is the total productive loss that has happened on the particular machine Hence, I believe, my um, friends, you are very much aware how you can make a waterfall diagram. You can use it for many other purposes just to show that how are the breakup of losses. Now, let me take you through a case study that's about debottlenecking a packing line of a leading pharmaceutical organization. So, this was a project on OE and that resulted into around 0.3 million US dollar savings, annual savings. So I think that is big and huge savings. I mean, this was just the start initiative, as you can only see on the right hand side that it's around 18 to 38 percent. So you can go beyond 38 percent as well. So let me take you what the challenge basically was. So once again, packing line was the bottleneck. Bottleneck means that other lines are producing much more than this and you cannot make more because your packing line is producing less. We started targeting, okay, the productivity is very low on the packing line. So first things was like you start identifying what was your current OE. So it came up to like 18%. So solution cannot be immediate, right? So when you have started understanding that, okay, it was 18%, you start taking a look at what are the basic six big, six big losses in this we could find out that there were losses in terms of shift changeover there were losses in terms of a product to a product changeover on the machine that was a big issue along with that there were losses on the machine in the cartonator when the foil would be over so what you need to do is you need to stop the machine bring in a foil and then replace the foil so actions big losses another one was about breakdown that happened there were a lot of breakdowns that were frequently happening so we started calculating the mean time before failure and mean, mean time to repair, mean time between failure and mean time to repair for the total time on that particular machine. With this, we started identifying about how we can improve the breakdown so that the time lost on breakdown is very much lesser. Second important part was the changeover reduction. So as you need to do a changeover from one product to other, so how can we do it? There was a lot of time that was lost on doing a setup after a changeover. So best, we did a small SMED, single minute exchange of dye. I'll give you a brief of what are the results are. So there were certain things like uh, there was a particular train operator that was required to do a changeover. So we made a standard work with which every operator could do the changeover in the same, same standard time. There were a few settings that were visually managed so that people could actually set the cam at per that visual recording and hence the time required to change was reduced. We can get into understanding this deeper through the SMED concept once you go through the webinar on SMED. Final outcomes were that OE of the line improved from 18% to 38%. So this means that on that particular product, on that line, you save, you increase the revenue by 0.3 million dollars every year. That's a huge savings, I think, when you start a small project. I'm telling you, my friends, this is just one line. So if your organization has a lot of production lines, so you can imagine what are the saving OE can give you. So with this, we come to the end of the presentation. And any more questions, you can just contact LASIP, uh, contact at lasipsociety.org. Thank you and have a nice day.